So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and copy the ping server method and then go down and then paste it. And this is gonna be the one to get a server. So I'm gonna call it get server. And we want to make this go to get. We're gonna pass in the ID. So I'm gonna remove everything and then set this to ID. The param is also gonna be the ID. And we want to get the ID as a long and then pass in the ID. Remove the exception because I don't think we're gonna be throwing an exception in this case. Remove this line as well. And everything is gonna to be the same except that here we're gonna call the service so we're gonna call the service and then call the get pass in the id so this is gonna return the server as part of our data and the response and change the message here as well so i'm gonna remove all this and then say something like server retrieve and that's pretty much everything we have to do for the get server so we're going to get the id and the path of the url and then get it in here as a long and then call the service to get that specific server and then we're going to pass it in as part of our data and then everything else is the same so i'm going to copy this one more time and scroll down and then paste it and this is going to be the delete mapping so i'm going to change this to delete mapping and this is going to go to delete so I'm going to change this to delete and we also need the ID when we're deleting and I'm going to change the method name to delete. So delete server. We're also going to get the ID and instead of get, we're going to call the delete, pass in the ID and then we're going to pass in the message here. So we're going to say deleted. So that's going to be the true or false. So for the data, it's going to be a key of deleted and that's going to be either true or false. Of course, we're never going to see the false because it's going to throw an exception, but just in case you never know what can happen. So this is going to be either true or false and that's how we're going to know that the server was deleted and then we're going to change the message as well to deleted and everything else is going to be the same so you can see that this is really just a rinse and repeat and that makes everything really easy when everything is consistent you can see that every time we're sending the same response to the front end now the last method that i need to add inside of this uh, controller is the one that's going to read the url for the image of the server and then return the actual image to the front end so I'm going to copy this again one more time and the last time and then go down and paste this. So this is going to be a get mapping. So I'm going to delete all this, put a G here and remove that E. So get mapping and that's going to go to remember this has to be the same path that we define on the server image. So if we go back real quick inside of the implementation and scroll down. So the path has to be server forward slash image and then the image name. So let me just copy this and close out of this. So remember this entire class is living under server. So we have that first portion of the URL and then we want this to go to image. All right, so I'm gonna remove some of those four slashes and we want the image name. So that's gonna be inside of the URL as well. So I'm gonna say file name, okay? So that's gonna be like server one or server two or server three.png. And then we're gonna grab the file name and we're gonna pass it in here and that's gonna be a string. So that's the file name. And I'm gonna remove all of this because we're not gonna return anything as a response or anything like that. All we need to return is the bytes that we can read from that file. So I'm gonna change the return type as well. That's gonna be byte and array. So that's gonna be a bunch of bytes. And we're gonna say get server image. Okay, so that's the name of the function. And I need to pass in another parameter for the get annotation and we need to pass the et here. All right, so et get mapping. So we need to pass in another parameter. And for me to be able to do this, I have to specify each parameter that I'm passing in here inside of this uh, function. So the first one is the path, like you already know. So we're gonna set the path to that. So if you're not gonna pass in anything else, you don't need to say path equal. You just pass in the path. But if you're gonna pass something else, then you have to specify the path so that you can differentiate between the different parameters that you're passing. And the second one that I wanna pass in is produces. I wanna pass in image underscore PNG underscore value and close that. So let's go ahead and import this. Let's go to more action and import static constant. And it's supposed to come from media type. So let's go ahead and select that. So if we go in here, it's only gonna say image.png because we have PNG images. So if we go back and close this, we're explicitly saying that this is producing PNG values. So that's gonna be some sort of image, not a JSON. So by default, for instance, for those functions or those methods, they're returning JSON. But here we're explicitly saying this is gonna return an image of type PNG. So now all we have to do is to go to that location and see if we can read the bytes for that image and then return that. So I'm gonna do files and I want to do read all bytes. 
as you can see, it's coming up here. And this takes a path. So I'm going to say paths that get and then we need to pass in a URI. So remember, this is inside of my downloads inside of the folder called images. So I'm going to say system that get property and I want to go to my uh, home folder. So that's going to be user that home. So that's going to do like whatever my username is and then put me inside of the home folder for that computer. And then I need to go to the download. So I'm going to put a plus sign and then do downloads and then I need to go inside of images. So that's the name of the folder and then forward slash and then I need to add in the file name. So I'm going to do plus and we have the file name that's coming up here and then end this with a semicolon. So this is going to give us an error because it throws an exception. We can just add it to the metal signature like this. So when we set the image URL on the servers, then when we load it in the browser, by default, the browser is going to send a get request and that's going to be intercepted by this method. And the get request is going to have the file name. It's going to be something like localhost 8080 forward slash image forward slash server one that PNG. So we're grabbing the server one that PNG. We're going inside of that folder and then try to read the bytes from the file. And that's exactly what we're returning. And this is going to return the image itself. So that's pretty much everything we have to do in the controller. So our application is almost ready to be tested and we're going to be doing that very soon. What I want to do is to add in some servers in the database so that we can see something when we try to, let's say, when we try to list all the servers that we have, because if we try to do that right now, we're just going to get an empty array. It's not going to have anything in it. So let's go into the main application file and I'm going to go ahead and close all this. So inside of the main application file, we can define a bean of type commit line runner, and that's going to run after the application has been initialized. And then we can just save some servers in there so that when we go to the browser, we can actually see something. So I'm going to do command line runner. You can see it coming up here and I'm just going to name it run and give it the server repo. So I'm going to say server repo, give it the same name and then open and close. And inside of there, I don't want to return uh, an error function. So I'm going to do args error function and every piece of code that I put in there will run after the application has been initialized. So what I can do is call the server and then save some new servers. So I'm going to do new server and pass a null for the ID so that GPA knows that this is a new server and I need to pass in an IP address. So let's say 192.168.1.160, for example, have to give it a name. So let's say Ubuntu Linux, for example have to give it a memory. So let's say this is a 16 gig and then I have to give it a type. So let's say this is a personal computer, so a PC, and then I have to give it an image. So that's supposed to be HTTP colon double four slash localhost colon 8080. And remember, this is supposed to go to server forward slash image forward slash let's give this server one that PNG. And then lastly, we have to give it a status. So I'm going to say server up, for example. So this is really going over. So I'm going to put this on a new line just like that and then put the semicolon and then see if I can do a static import for this just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more servers and then I'm going to come back so that we can run this. So I went ahead and added four servers here. As you can see, I have four servers added with different status and everything. And then I'm going to put the bean annotation on top of this so that this can get picked up by spring. All right. So now when we start the application, we're going to have something saved in a database. The last thing we have to do is to put in the configuration for our database connection. So let's close this class and let's go back to the resource. So I'm not using templating. So I'm going to delete these two folders because I don't need them because this is an API. Like we're not going to have any issues email files in here or anything like that. And then I'm going to change this to a YAML file. So I'm going to refactor this and change the extension to YAML. Oops, lowercase. And I'm just going to go inside of this file and then paste the configuration because this configuration is always going to be the same every time. So I don't want to have to type this while you watch. All we're doing is defining the location of the database and the name of the database. So that's on our local host because the MySQL server is running on my local host and the name of the database is server DB. And then my password and my username, I define the dialect. So kind of like the version, which is version eight that I have installed. And then I want to format all the log and I want to show all the log. So that's a very small configuration that we're doing for the database. And this is also assuming that you have MySQL installed on your computer already 
because we're not going to go through that. So if you already have MySQL installed, then that should work for you. You just have to change the information here to match your information and also change the version as well if you don't have version 8. And you can use Postgre or whatever relational database that you want to use. In this case, I have MySQL installed, so I'm just using MySQL. But you can use Postgre or whatever else you want. As long as it's a relational database, then everything should work fine. So if we didn't make any mistakes at this point, if we run the application, everything should work. So we're going to go ahead and do that.